Okay, back to on script. I hope you're all enjoying this meal. <laughs> Brian Terry's awesome. The beans I just had were great with the cornbread croutons and all the little tosses, and I like a lot of heat, so that's good. Our next awards presenter is a very familiar face. It says familiar face, but they needed to add in familiar and beautiful face <laughs> at these awards. In fact, he took his own James Beard Foundation Leadership Award last year. His credits, like their little, little things he's done in this life, include serving as the executive director for First Lady Michelle Obama's Let's Move initiative and the White House's senior policy advisor for nutrition. Today, he is the founder of Trove and a partner in Acre Venture Partners. Please welcome another badass in this world, Sam Cass. How is everybody? Good. Um, before we go to our next honoree, uh, first, I just want to say thank you to Susan Ungaro for all of your tremendous leadership and to all the board, if we could give it up for her. We've come a long, we've come a long way since that little conference center, wherever we were in D.C. like six years ago or something. Uh, but the importance of this awards is, uh, goes beyond awards for this community, so thank you for your leadership. Chef, this meal is off the charts. Seriously, best meal yet. Awesome. Um, so I have the, uh, the great honor and privilege to present the award to Congressman McGovern. And I think it's safe to say that there probably is no, f no other person who's more deserving of this award uh, than Congressman McGovern. And that's because he's the only person here who has to go to work with the Tea Party every single day. Um, but it turns, it turns out and that's some real talk, guys. That's just not a word. The Tea Party's real. Uh, um, but it actually turns out Mr. McGovern just, just told me that actually the real reason he should be getting this award is because he makes the best Umbria pork shoulder in the world. So I propose that next year, uh, Congressman, I think you should be cooking this dinner and make that, that pork. But the real, the real reason that we're honoring him is because uh, for his whole life, really, he's dedicated himself to public service. And he's served in the, in, in the House of Representatives since 1994. Um, he, he has fought day in and day out for better food and for basic food for everybody. Um, there is no person in the chamber uh, who is as principled who has determined uh, and relentless in his pursuit for equality and justice, particularly when it comes to food. There's a lot of cynicism when it comes to the, our community here around politics and food. But to know Jim McGovern means that you know that cynicism is not fully warranted. There's plenty to be cynic cynical about. But to know that this man is in the halls of power every day fighting on behalf of the people who don't really have a voice, you know that our cynicism oversteps the reality of what's happening in our government. His accolades go on and on. He's the co-chair of the House uh, Hunger Caucus. He's the co-chair of the, 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 hunger, the Con Congressional Hunger Center. He's championed all sorts of bills uh, in this area. Um, he was a fierce proponent of the Healthier and Free Kids Act, and it wouldn't have passed without his leadership. He's one of the few who actually does the food stamp challenge and talks about it, um, as well as being one of the foremost experts on foreign policy, fighting on education reform, being a champion on health care, on equal justice, on equal pay, on the list goes on and on and on and on. But food, he's, he's hung, he's hung a, a hat on. Um, and it's important to remember that governing is really hard. It's hard. It's hard work. It's thankless. It's slow. It's super frustrating. Um, and, and we do tend to dismiss the views of the other side as being so preposterous that we then forget that they actually exist. 
And we have the luxury to forget that because we're here in New York in this nice place. But those people are real and they're fighting every day against some of the values we hold most dear. But I will tell you from firsthand experience that Congressman McGovern is fighting every day on behalf of the things that we hold dear in ways that we will never know and never see. There's the big, the big accomplishments. But every time you get a win in Washington, you spend the next decade or more defending that win. Every single approach, every single farm bill, you have to play defense. You don't get points for that. Nobody knows all the wins that we've, big, the biggest wins we've had on these issues nobody's ever heard about because it was preventing a catastrophe. Since the day this man took office, people on the other, other side of the issue, not, not, not going to be partisan, on the other side of the issue, have tried to gut snap every single opportunity every single day. Every single time Congressman McGovern was out there fighting with everything he had. There's no person more reliable when it comes to defending the rights and humanity of low-income people in this country than Congressman McGovern. And I want to say one thing to our broader community here and to the foundation, that this award to this man is really important. We have to create the conditions where people who champion the things that we care about are honored and respected and revered for their good work. If we want people to take risk, to put their political careers on the line, to put their neck out, to compromise, he's had to make some tough comprom compromises over the years. Things that he knew weren't perfect, but knew in the end were better than, than the alternative. Those have to be wins for people like Congressman McGovern. And it's up to us to do that. And today is a really important step. So um, I just want to say, <clears throat> As somebody who knows, uh, has a pretty good sense of what you go through every day, how hard it is, um, the challenges and the stresses and the feeling of responsibility, um, I just want to thank you for your tremendous leadership uh, and for all that you've done for our country, for all of us, but particularly for those who don't really have a voice in Washington, D.C. So thank you. If we could roll the video. Well, uh, first of all, let me thank Sam Cash for the uh, very generous introduction. I can hardly wait to hear what I'm going to say after that buildup. Um, <laughs> but I want to thank him as well uh, for the incredible leadership that um, he demonstrated when he was in the White House. Um, and uh, I, I think it's important for everybody to understand, and I know Deb Eschmeyer is here as well, and I want to thank her as, uh, as well. And, and um, uh, we have been making progress. Um, and sometimes we don't appreciate the progress that we've made, but uh, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, um, which has expanded school meals to countless numbers of kids and expand, ex, ex, uh, expanding summer meal programs and, and, and having uh, better nutritional standards with regard to the food that we serve our kids, none of that would have been possible if it wasn't for the leadership of Sam and Deb um, and the incredible work of this president and this first lady, and they deserve a round of applause for all the great work that they have done. <clears throat> and I, I, I probably should clear something up because uh, a number of people have come up to me and, and thought that I'm George McGovern's son. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I need to tell you, I mean, I worked my way through college working in his Senate office. Um, he is one, was one of my dearest friends in the world, and I'm a liberal Democrat just like he is, and he's one of my mentors, but we're not related. But I, I thought I should tell you that because a couple of people have come up to me and said, I've been a longtime supporter of your dad's, and they seemed a little puzzled when I said, well, thank you, my dad owns a liquor store in Massachusetts, keep on supporting him. Um, but, but anyway, I needed to say that for the record. But you know, when I found out that I was gonna get this award, um, I, I really didn't know what to say. You know, as, as so many of you know, that the work that we do to solve hunger and increase access to nutritious food for families here in the United States and around the world 
is not something we do for awards or for praise. Uh, and in a year like this, when so many other stories are dominating the headlines, I can tell you it's, not, uh, it's also not because we, cra we crave media attention. Uh, the work we do to end hunger is rooted in a fundamental belief that food is a basic human right and that in the richest country in the world, nobody should go hungry. Uh, <clears throat> You know, as I look around this room and I look at all the great advocates here, um, I know we all do this because our heart aches for the 42 million Americans, many of whom are kids, who don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Uh, and um, I got to be honest with you, as a United States Congressman, uh, I'm ashamed of the fact that there are hungry people in this country. Uh, and I think we, we, I think we can do something to end it. I want to thank the James Beard Foundation for this incredible honor, and Susan, I want to thank you in particular. Uh, I want to thank this foundation for the tireless work that you do to recognize and amplify the incredible work that so many advocates do uh, every year across the globe. And I also want to thank my, uh, my fellow honorees, um, you know, uh, 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 Greg and Lucas and, and John and Anna and Raj, um, uh, you really are an inspiration. Uh, you have actually done work that I think deserves uh, an award, and so I'm humbled to be standing here with all of you. Look, hunger is a political condition. It is solvable. Uh, we have the resources to end it. All we lack is the political will to do it. And the James Beard Foundation is playing a leading role in the ongoing work to lift up voices that need to be heard most. You know, in so many ways, you're helping to raise awareness, getting more people engaged in this work, and making a difference for so many families in need. You know, uh, in, the, in this line of work, it's easy to get frustrated uh, and feel like we're not making enough progress. Uh, but standing in this room and seeing all of you and the passion uh, that you are bringing to this work, I've never, never felt more certain that solving hunger is within our reach. Uh, we need to be impatient with the status quo. And we need to be impatient <laughs> with... Um, And we need to be impatient with political leaders who don't get it. Uh, I said this this afternoon, there needs to be a political consequence to those who are holding us behind. Uh, for those of us who advocate for the most needy in this country, uh, we can't be a cheap date uh, in our advocacy on these issues. Uh, there needs to be a consequence. When I vote uh, for gun control, the NRA is at my door. Um, you know, when people vote to cut SNAP, when they vote to increase hunger in this country, we need to be at their door telling them that we're not going to let their constituents forget. <clears throat> now, the Farm Bill is coming up uh, next year, uh, and so let's work together to expand SNAP, uh, to support our local farmers, to help promote the idea that food is medicine, uh, and to find ways to uh, eliminate the obscene amount of food waste that exists in this country. Uh, I'm going to do my part in the Farm Bill to try to advocate for policies to deal with issues like food waste. I believe that we ought to create a separate office in the U.S. Department of Agriculture just to deal with the food waste issue because it is so enormous. And when we do that, I'm going to need your help. Um, <clears throat> but th but, th but this, is, uh, this is all doable. One final thing. I don't know who the next president of the United States is going to be, but whoever she is, um, um, we are going to work with her to do a White House conference on food, nutrition, and hunger. And we are going to bring everybody in this room together. We're going to get Sam and Deb and everybody in this room together uh, and others across this country who have a stake in this issue. And we're going to develop a holistic, comprehensive plan to end hunger and to promote better nutrition all across this country for everybody. This is doable. All we need to do is have the political will. And I think with the people in this room um, and listening to what I heard today at this conference, um, I believe we're going to do it. Uh, there are some issues that we face that I don't think can be solved in my lifetime. Um, I'm looking at all the chaos and violence all over the world. I wish I could tell you the magic uh, uh, policy to end all wars. So never again will we have another war. Uh, I don't, I'm going to keep on trying to find it. I don't know whether we'll get to it in my lifetime. But I do know this. We can end hunger in our lifetime. This is not rocket science. Uh, this is about whether or not we have the will to do it. Uh, 
and I'm going to work with all of you to make sure we, we, we have that will. So thank you very much for this incredible honor. And I'm happy to be here with my wife, Lisa, as well. So thank you very much.